In this chapter, we are going to learn about the explicit weight in selenium. In the previous chapter, we discussed about the implicit weight and as I said like in selenium, we have two types of weight. One is the implicit weight and another one is the explicit weight. Let us explore the explicit weight. In explicit weight also, we have two types. One is the fluent weight and another one is the web dryer weight. Web dryer weight is introduced in the selenium 3 version where it extends the fluent weight. So if you use the web dryer weight, definitely you will get the functions from the fluent weight as well as it will at as well as it will give you the functions in the web dryer weight as well so in our course i'm going to use the web dryer weight because that is what mostly preferred there is a difference between implicit explicit and in explicit also there is a difference like fluent and the web driver in fluent weight uh, we have something called polling time that means we can say like in in what interval we have to search for the element whereas in web driver weight it is by default the polling time is of 500 milliseconds so for each and every 500 milliseconds it's going to do the action let me show you the syntax and the use case scenario as well for example here in our application let go dot in slash weights we have a simple alert once i click on this it's going to bring up the alert but if you notice i have clicked but the alert is not here and after a few seconds it just appears just to say hi to me right so that's so sweet now we have to handle this alert so in my script, I have loaded the website letcode.in slash weight and also I have the implicit weight. So I'm going to show you that implicit weight is not going to help us in this scenario. Let us understand. So first we'll just ins inspect this element and we are going to take the element. Uh, so we have a ID. So I'm just going to use the click function here and here I'm going to say dot click. Now as soon as I do the click action, we note that we are going to get the uh, alert right so we already know how to handle the alert so i'm just going to write quickly so driver dot switch to dot alert dot accept correct now let's try to run this so i'm going to right click and run as java application let us see what it's going to throw us the simple alert button is clicked and the script is not yet completed i mean in the browser now only we are getting the alert but if you notice carefully, you already have seen that we got this exception in the right hand side, right? And it says that no alert present exception. You might ask me, Kaushik, you have added implicit weight and you have waited for 10 seconds, then why alert is not affected? As I said in the previous chapter, implicit weight is going to affect only two functions, that is find elements and find elements, right? I mean find ele element and the find elements. So if there is no nothing called like accept or uh, this element then it will wait the implicit weight will take care but in this scenario where we are trying to wait for the alert in that scenario it's not going to handle okay so i hope now you understood the difference between implicit and explicit now let us see how to handle this scenario so i'm going to comment this because it's not going to work now right so we have this web driver weight syntax so i'm going to call the class called web driver um, weight and we are going to create an object as weight equal to new web driver weight. And here we have to pass our driver instance that is Chrome driver equal to new Chrome driver, right? So we have to pass the instance and we have to say the timeout, how long I have to wait. Uh, just for this example, I can wait for 20 seconds maybe. But as I said, that is the maximum threshold. Whenever it sees the alert or any of the actions we are going to perform, it will just do in the interval of 500 milliseconds. Now here I have to say wait dot until and here i have to pass expected condition here we can see we have two expected condition one is the interface and another one is the class expected conditions so we have to use the class here and then i'm going to say alert is present that means we will wait until there is an alert okay and by the way this is going to return me the alert interface here alert right so it's going to return me the alert I can use the same object and I can say like until uh, like I will just rename this so I will just rename this like alert and I can say alert dot accept that is also fine or else we can just copy and paste it here and we can use anything is fine so basically what we are trying to do is we are trying to wait uh, for the alert to be appeared and how long it's basically 20 seconds why we have to specify the time in the sense if I don't specify that time uh, there is no default time there is a default polling time of 500 seconds polling time in the sense it is going to uh, do the action for interval of that particular time that is 500 milliseconds 
whereas this is my maximum time right i cannot wait for one day or two days right so i have to wait for particular seconds if that is not going to happen within the given time then definitely we can raise a bug right so we are expecting an alert to be appeared maybe within 10 seconds if the alert is not there then definitely that's a defect right so we have to uh, raise a defect okay so here we are trying to accept the alert now in this scenario uh, before doing the accept we are going to sys out the text from alert so alert dot get text just to make sure we got the alert because i know this this action is going to be very very quick okay so right click run as java application okay so alert button is clicked now and in the right hand side you can see that we do not have any exception and now the alert appears and it got accepted and here you can see we got the text like finally i'm here just to say hi okay so this is one of the example from the expected conditions similarly we have a lot of things like uh, if i go to the expected conditions this is the class and if i give control o and here you can see that we have like lot of things like i can wait until the url is going to be something like uh, the url to be url contains url matches presence of element visibility of element invisibility of element text to be uh, staleness of element to be clickable there are so many things uh, i might not able to show you all the example within the same chapter or same video course but definitely i have shown you the system i mean syntax based on that you can do what we mostly use is basically visibility of invis invisibility of element to be clickable uh, sometimes the url and the titles contains and uh, uh, that's it okay so that's it pretty much enough i will show you quickly one more example for the web driver wait okay now let's take our uh, the login test uh, example so i'm going to copy and paste that within the this chapter chapter 16 and then i'm going to do what is basically here we are trying to do the login as soon as I logged in, let me show you the UI. As soon as I log in, here you can see that it says like welcome Kaushik Chatterjee, right? So there is a toast message basically. So this is known as toast notification. And then I'm going to click on the sign out. Okay. So if I click on the sign out here, we are going to get an exception called element click intercepted. Let us understand the exception. First, let us see and then we'll try to understand that. Okay and here we have the link text so i'm just going to uh, click 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 right so i'm going to click on the login and then immediately i am trying to uh, click on the uh, sign out button as well but we know that in between this we have a toast message right toast message okay one more thing you might ask me kaushik you should include the implicit right as well so i'm going to include that as well okay so i'm going to include driver.manage dot timeout dot implicitly waits and here it's going to be 20 seconds that is pretty much enough and i'm going to disable this guy because we have driver in our global scope right i mean in the environment variables right okay let me run this and show you what is the problem in this code and how to fix it with the help of web driver wait logged in now it's going to click on the sign out but sign out is not clicked yet and if i go back to my eclipse i have got an exception as i said earlier and the exception is basically element click intercepted exception what is intercepted exception element click intercepted exception in the sense we are trying to click on this particular element so if you just move this you can see uh, other element would receive the click action that means uh, what is exactly happened here is when we try to click on the sign button uh, remember implicit weight is there what is the job of implicit weight basically it will try to find the element within the given amount of time element is there but what happened on top of element we have another element that toast message so we have to handle that toast message then only we can do the sign out now how to handle this uh, toast message is very simple we have to wait until that toast message gets disappeared right so let us bring our web driver wait code so i'm just going to copy uh, this guy here from here okay and then i'm going to say wait uh, until again and here i'm going to say expected condition dot invisibility so what is invisibility invisibility in the sense it's going to be 
uh, wait until the element is going to be invisibility, right? And we have to pass the element here basically. So invisibility of if I mouse over, you can see that it is it needs the argument as a web element. So let us create the web element first. Uh, before that, we have to do the inspection. So we have to uh, this is the toast message actually. If I inspect this, I can take it from here uh, or this one, right? So I can take it from here role. And let me just uh, this is the xpath basically. So let me write it quickly. So driver dot find element by xpath. And here we are going to pass our xpath and we'll store that in a web element like um, toast. Okay. And then we are going to pass the toast here. Okay. Now, if I run this, definitely 100% it should pass. Let me show you that. Okay. Then I will explain it once again. So login has happened and we are able to see the toast message. Once the toast message is in visibility, that means it disappeared. Now you can see it clicked on the sign out uh, and that's why we are able to see like bye bye, see you soon, right? That's it. The script is passed. We have no exception, right? So that is the real time usage of web driver wait. Now, apart from this, also we can do like element to be clickable. So we can also say like element to be clickable. Uh, that means it will wait until that element is ready to do the click action. Uh, let's try. I'm not sure about it, but let's try. It should work, I believe. Okay. So login is completed. Now it's just going to wait until the element is clickable in state. And once it is clickable, uh, okay, in this case, it doesn't work. But most of the time, it should work if it's clickable. Okay. So here you can see element again click intercepted, but you got the idea, right? So we can go with the previous one, the invisibility of, right? Okay, that's cool. Now, based on this, you might have already got the idea. We can implement the same in our um, uh, base class as well, right? So if I go to my base class, and here I can say like, uh, before doing the click action, right? So here we have a function called click. What can I do is I can check if the element is ready to be clicked. Okay, so here I can say like uh, I can paste that, uh, not this one. Uh, let me copy this, this one. And I can say like wait uh, dot until, and I can say like expected conditions to be uh, element to be clickable, and uh, then I can pass the element here. So when the element is ready to clickable, then I can do the click action, right? So here it's going to be uh, ready state, right? So ready element, and then I can say ready element dot click, right? So it will wait for the element, and then it will do the click action, right? So now I believe you are getting a basic knowledge on why we have created all the functions and why we are using like this kind of framework, reusable functions, right? So whenever I call this function, it will internally wait for the element to be clickable, then it will do the click action. So that is the advantage of reusable functions or also we can call it as a framework. Our framework is a tiny framework because framework, if you take it's a long, we have so many things, the loggers, the reporters and so many things. But what we are doing is the very beginners because this video is planned for only for beginners. Okay, that's it. Now next move, uh, let's move to the next one. Okay. Um, before that, uh, if you want to implement the wait concept for the alerts, that is also possible. So here you can see that, um, what's this? Type in alert, right? So we can wait for the alert to be um, <clears throat> uh, wait, right? So we can write like until. Uh, so I'll just leave that up to you. So here you can see that we have like uh, wait until expected alert is present. So you can implement for all the alerts within this particular functions. Okay. Now see in the next chapter.